If you're someone who's had a hard time solving problems or personal challenges, maybe you felt like your brain just wasn't working. But did your brain really have the answer? Meet the slime mold. It has absolutely no brain, but it solves mazes, remembers patterns, and makes decisions. You've heard of AI beating chess masters and dolphins understanding syntax, but this brainless blob can do a better job than most mathematicians and civil designers. What does that mean for your brain? Or mine? In the year 2000, it solved a maze in hours. In 2010, it redesigned Tokyo's subway network. If you feel weirdly outplayed by a pile of slime, don't worry. It'll all make sense while I give you today's dose of bean scent knowledge. Our impressive sticky friend is Physarum polycephalum, an acellular slime mold. One giant cell containing millions of nuclei in shared cytoplasm. It was documented over 400 years ago in 1654 as a fast-growing fungus, but first classified by German mycologist Heinrich Schultz in 1875, who rejected that description and said it was more like its own thing. This taxonomy debate lasted forever. Animal-like movement, fungus-like spores, amoeba-like feeding, just constantly shifting people's idea of its category. Protista became the slime mold's official kingdom in 1995 due to these unique behaviors, but maybe an influencing factor was for biologists to stop spending time arguing at conferences. But what's its claim to fame in the eyes of most other people? It performs tasks we'd label cognitive, root optimization, memory, even rudimentary decision making, without a single neuron. When scientists like Toshiyuki Nagagaki and Andrew Adamatsky kept giving it puzzles, it more than exceeded expectations by outperforming humans and our inventions. Under the microscope, you'll see the endless stream of nuclei moving around like commuters on a subway, stuck in a hellish loop of being late to work or their blind date. It actually moves through wave-like contractions and is one of the fastest single cells on Earth. It can cover space hundreds of times bigger than its average size, so this unassuming fella is definitely an athlete. Dartmouth College grew a 100 gram slime mold to end up covering a square meter. That's enough space for multiple people to stand on. Australian hobbyist Dr. Heather Barnett got one to spell hello across a glass plate in 2014. And her assistant was probably an aspiring artist who had a massive nerdgasm and continued the trend of slimes in movies and games. But how do you get new slimes? Well, slime mold spores germinate into swarm cells which look like tiny tiny tadpoles. When two compatible swarm cells fall in love and fuse, you get something called a plasmodium, which can live for years if fed oatmeal and kept in darkness. Just like British Twitch streamers. Now when they lack food, the plasmodium turns into a sclerodium, a hard dry husk that can stay alive by hibernating for decades. In 1959, Soviet biologist Georgi Zatvatkin reawakened a 20 year old sclerodium, which if you look at the timeline, implies that the slime just didn't want to be around for World War II and the whole Nazi deal. Fun fact amidst the science, slime molds are actually what you see as the zombie infection in world known franchise The Last of Us. While the game says it's based on the Cordyceps fungi and the developers were inspired by it, the visuals simply don't match. It's all slime molds. But our little protist pal used to be wrongly called a fungi, which might have contributed to the overlap. In 1926, British naturalist Arthur Lister insisted they were fungi. His daughter Galilma Lister politely published a rebuttal, noting they could move independently and failed to exhibit other fungal characteristics. Family dinners were probably pretty tense, so its addition to the Protista Kingdom in 1995 probably saved a many a future mother's pumpkin pies from going to waste. Let's look at what the little fella achieved in its time. In the year 2000, Japanese scientists placed food in a petri dish at key locations matching the stations of the Tokyo subway system. Then they dropped the slime mold into the center of the dish. Within 24 hours, the slime mold formed a network between the food stations that was more efficient than the actual human subway. It avoided redundancy, adapted to resource constraints, and even built in its own resilience, finding alternate routes in case one segment failed. This wasn't a fluke. The same team repeated the experiment with different urban layouts. London, Berlin, Boston. Each time the slime mold built elegant transit-like systems without blueprints and without calculations. This happened because slime molds lay down trails of mucus as they move. If an area doesn't yield food, they stop reinforcing that trail and it fades. If a path does lead to future nutrients, they thicken that trail. Over time, the mold literally shapes itself into the most efficient solution. 
Next, these same scientists built a maze. Simple layout, food at the far end. The slime mold spread through every corridor, then retracted from dead ends, leaving only the optimal route. This pruning behavior mimics what computer scientists called minimum spanning trees. These are networks that cover all points with the least possible distance. We use them to design electrical grids, delivery routes, and social networks, but apparently nature had this long since figured out. This experiment was repeated again in Japan in 2007, but with a maze that had five exits, and the slime mold produced a Steiner tree network, a mathematical optimization concept, and it beat a machine computer's algorithm efficiency. And it's even more resilient than algorithm code. If you cut the mold in half, each side continues to remember where the food was in the maze. It's like snipping a flash drive in two and both pieces are still able to open the same files. This memory ability has also been tested a lot. French researchers trained molds in 2016 to ignore caffeine and quinine. Training lasted one week, roughly 50% of a slime mold's typical learning cycle. They were amazed to find that after trained molds were introduced to naive ones, the avoidance behavior transferred in under three hours. They actually warned the young homies to stay off the Red Bull. Australian researchers also held a learning experiment where they made a three-way choice of food, where the more nutritious food was more dangerous to reach. Slime molds opted for medium level risk while under stress, mirroring risk aversion decisions in animal foraging theory. The translation? Slime molds are more careful about risky decisions than a lot of people are. Slime molds can even learn patterns and make decisions. There was an experiment in Japan again in 2011. They must really like slime. It explains the slime girls. They recorded the rhythm of contractions in slime molds after feeding them on a schedule, and the plasmodia quickly started to predict the schedule of feeding through contractions every 11 hours. When feeding rhythm was suddenly changed, the contraction rhythm persisted for only three cycles, which evidences that they remembered the pattern, but decided to stop after realizing it wasn't correct anymore. But this doesn't just work for food. They can actually receive electrical signals like any brain and make decisions through that. British researchers put this to the test in 2012 by building hybrid circuit boards where slime mold was used to wire some of the electronic nodes. If a circuit burned out, the mold rerouted current by regrowing tubes. Nature's nanomachines, son. But science is still scratching the surface, mostly because the surface keeps moving. Can slime molds have their memory chemically erased somehow? Do they sleep when they stop pulsing? Drop a comment to let me know what you expect we'll find out next about slime molds. I'm sure you can tell just how much we've learned from this amazing little guy. Robotics researchers used its behavior to design embodied AI. No central brain, no top-down code commands, just constant adaptation, reshaping itself to get better at their tasks. Just like ChatGPT. This blob isn't just solving puzzles, it's shaping the next generation of machines. In Tokyo, city planners took the slime mold experiment data very seriously. They analyzed its growth patterns to improve evacuation planning in case of earthquakes. Slime mold naturally found the quickest, most efficient paths, so they took that in stride. We're even seeing it in neural engineering. A slime mold can recover and reconnect if damaged, so bioengineers are copying its cytoskeletal repair strategies to design prosthetics and implants that can heal themselves, like muscles regrowing after injury. And then of course there's the most important learning, arguably, the philosophy, which should hopefully apply to the rest of the people watching in the world. We like to think intelligence is what happens inside a head, but slime mold shows us that intelligence is in the behavior, if a system can sense, respond, and improve, it's pretty smart, whether or not it ever thinks. After all, we all recently learned in neuroscience that staying smart is about keeping your neuroplasticity up, right? And neuroplasticity is not how much you can think, it's how well you can adapt to thinking about your needs. So maybe you don't need new neurons or a billion ways of thinking to make good decisions. You might just need to look at the feedback from what you're doing, have some clear goals, and have the willingness to change. Physarum polycephalum proves a clear point. If intelligence can ooze across a petri dish, maybe anyone in the world can make intelligent decisions if they focus on the facts instead of inventing their own ideas. So the next time you face a problem in your life that feels impossible, just remember, somewhere a brainless pile of slime found the shortest path in a maze within seconds. So maybe it's not about thinking harder. Maybe you're already overthinking and you can get the right answer if you're honest with yourself and look at what you already know.
Thanks for watching till the end of the video. Go forth and absorb your new knowledge. Please subscribe if you liked getting this perspective from us and you want to see more videos that help you grow your own perspective. We'll see you next time.